Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ, and today I'm gonna to talk about the CARES Act and its effect on health savings accounts. So the CARES Act is the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, also known as the CARES Act. This act was signed into law on March 27th of 2020. And as most of you know, you may think of this as the coronavirus stimulus package because the stimulus check that many Americans have received over the past month, that $1,200 per adult or and $500 per child, this money was sent to you based on your 2018 or your 2019 taxes, your taxable income. And so that's what most people think about when they hear about the CARES Act. But one of the other things that was included in this act was a change in what can be reimbursed related to your HSA, your FSA, or an HRA. And so while I won't go into a lot of specifics about the benefits of an HSA, I do have multiple videos where I talk about that, so make sure you check out my playlist. Today I'm gonna to focus specifically on the changes made in the CARES Act and how that can affect you when you're using your HSA as an investment vehicle for your retirement. And so if you don't know about HSAs, an HSA is a health savings account, and it's an account that you can use to pay for medical expenses, but you're also paying them pre-tax, so you're getting that tax savings whenever you use your health savings account to pay for any of your medical needs or any pharmaceutical needs. And so what the CARES Act has done is made it possible for you to pay for over-the-counter medications as well as feminine personal care products. And so at some point in the time in the past, those were options that you could pay for using your HSA and then it was taken away. But now the CARES Act has now put it back into place so you can buy things like aspirin or allergy medicine and also feminine personal care products. And this is a huge deal because these are products that you probably need on a weekly or maybe a monthly basis, depending on any medical conditions that you may have, or maybe if you just have frequent headaches, or if every year during allergy season, you're a person that needs to continuously buy allergy medicine, because you're getting that triple tax advantage whenever you use your health savings account to pay for any of those items. So whenever you can get more items that you can pay for using your health savings account, that's always a good thing. And so the CARES Act makes it possible for you to go back to the beginning of January and any items bought since January 1st of 2020, you can actually submit those receipts if you still have them for reimbursement through your health savings account. But I also wanna offer an alternative to you for not only the items that you've already purchased, that you've already used your money for throughout 2020, but also for the future. Because currently there is no expiration date for the update that the CARES Act made to buying over-the-counter medications. But not only the updates that they made, just anything that you can use your health savings account for, it's actually better for you to pay for it out of your paycheck instead of using your health savings account funds and then reimburse yourself in the future with your health savings account funds after you've invested them over the long term. So I'm gonna break down how paying for something yourself now and then reimbursing yourself in the future is actually the better bet for you. And so if you don't know with your health savings account, you can actually invest in the stock market within your health savings account. And so while it's called a health savings account, you can actually connect an investment account, a brokerage account, to your health savings account, transfer that money from the actual savings portion of your account into the investment portion, and then you can invest in index funds or individual stocks or whatever you wanna invest that is available via the brokerage that is linked to your health savings account. And so I personally have two health savings accounts. I have one that is connected to my employer. And so when you have a high deductible health plan, that's what makes you eligible for an HSA, a health savings account. And then with that health savings account, you can also sign up for an investment investment account. And so in, in addition to the health savings account that came from my employer, you can also technically open as many health savings accounts as you want. And so I have an additional health savings account that I have separate from my employer where I can also invest in the stock market. And so with both of those accounts, they're made by different HSA providers, but they both have the same investment account and that's TD Ameritrade. And so with the deposits that I put into my health savings account, I can then transfer those funds into my specific health savings investment account with TD Ameritrade, and then I can buy index funds or I can buy individual stocks, and that way I can invest my money over the long term. And so when you do that, let's say you deposit $100 into your health savings account, and then you invest that into the stock market. And before I get into the breakdown of how much money your $100 can turn into over a 10, 20, or 30 year period, make sure you hit the like button because it really helps this channel. Also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video just like this. When you're investing that money over a 10 year period, if you're getting the average rate of return that the stock market has given over the past 90 to 100 years, then you're getting about eight to 10% 
compounded gains over a long period of time. And so if you were to take just $100 over a 10 year period, you would have over $200. So that means with that average 8% return, you're at least doubling your money every 10 years for every $100 or however much money you put in. So if it's $100 after 10 years, that's gonna turn into about $200. After another 10 years, that $200 is now gonna compound and that's gonna turn into over $400. And then after another 10 years, it's gonna be over $800. Not only that, it's actually gonna be over $1,000 after a 30 year period. And this would be true for every hundred dollars that you put into that account. And so with a health savings account, as an individual, you can put up to $3,550 per year in 2020. And with a family HSA, you can put up to $7,100 in 2020. And now this amount is expected to increase just like the amount for IRAs increase every year, 401ks increase just about every year. And so I expect that the HSA amount that you can deposit, the contribution limit will also increase. And so in the example that I'm going to use to further extend the amount of money that you can make, if you were to consistently deposit $3,600, so I'm going to go $50 above the current HSA contribution limit because I do expect this to increase over time. So it's actually going to be more than even $3,600, let's say 10, 20, 30 years from now. So if you were to max out your HSA over a 10 year period and it's $3,600, that means after 10 years, it's gonna be worth about $7,800. And then after 20 years, it's gonna be worth over $17,000. And then 30 years, it's gonna be worth over $38,000. And now that's only one year. That's one year of you putting in $3,600 per year. But if you were to put in $3,600 every year during that 10, 20, 30 year period. And to make it easier, if you were to break it up by $300 each month, $300 times 12, that gets you to 3,600. Because most people may not be able to put $3,600 at the beginning of the year every year. So being more realistic and being able to put that money in each month, either by having a direct deposit from your paycheck or having an automatic transfer from your checking account into your health savings account if you have one that's not directly linked to your employer. Then if you were to put $300 per month for a 30 year period and you're getting an average rate of return of 8% every year, then after 30 years, you would have $450,000 in your health savings account just because you invested it instead of having it only in savings. And so if you only had it in savings, then the total amount that you would have in your health savings account would be 108,000. But because you invested that money into the stock market, over that 30 year period, you were able to make over $340,000 in the stock market. Now that's the power of compounding interest. Now considering how expensive medical care is today in 2020, you can expect that maybe you might actually need $450,000 once you're in retirement just to pay for medical expenses. And the only way it's able to even grow to that amount is if you're paying for your current medical expenses with your current income or the current savings that you have. So that means over this 10, 20, 30 year period, you're gonna need to save those receipts. That way you can reimburse yourself in the future and those reimbursements, the money that you take out of your HSA, those will be tax-free. So you can think of that as tax-free income in your future based on the receipts that you've saved in order to reimburse yourself for things that you paid for 10, 20, 30 years ago. So think about all of the over-the-counter medications, all of the feminine products that you may purchase, and then also all of the normal medical expenses, you know, the co-pays, going to the doctor, getting your teeth cleaned at the dentist, maybe getting braces, you know, anything that would normally be reimbursable via your HSA. All of those items being paid over a 30 year period, once you're actually in retirement, or even actually before you're in retirement, if you choose to, you can reimburse yourself those funds as long as you save the receipt. And so there are platforms like Lively HSA, which is one of the platforms that I use outside of my employer. They actually allow you to save your receipts on their app or on their website. That way in the future, whenever you do wanna reimburse yourself, you can reimburse yourself those funds. And then those reimbursed funds will be coming from money that wasn't taxed because it was taken out of your paycheck before taxes were. You're also not being taxed because they're being used for medical expenses. So you're reimbursing yourself for medical expense that you've already paid, but because you allowed that 
$10 or that $50 or maybe that $1,000 receipt from some medical procedure or some medical visit, that was allowed to grow into much more money. So your $100 was allowed to grow into over $1,000 over a 30 year period. And so if instead of the $100 that you would have spent in your health savings account, you now have $1,000 in your health savings account. And then you can take out that $100. You've essentially had $900 made by not paying for your medical expenses through your HSA as soon as you had those expenses. But you can also save those receipts via an online document manager like Dropbox or Box or Google Drive. That way you have the copy and you don't have to worry about the company having to save your receipt. But like I mentioned, Lively is one of the platforms where they will actually save your receipts. And so maybe you use both. That way you just have a backup, but you don't wanna have just a physical receipt because physical receipts can fade over time. They can also be lost you can also, you know, there could be an accident that happens over a 30 year period. Maybe there's a fire, maybe there's some natural disaster, or maybe just when you're moving, if you have to move from one place to another, you could lose the receipts that way as well. So having an electronic copy of something that you're gonna have to save over a 10, 20 or 30 year period would be the best route to go. And not just an electronic copy that you have physical access to, like saving it to a hard drive, because something could happen to that hard drive as well, just like the physical receipt. And so there are other benefits that I didn't go into very much detail like the triple tax advantage, but I also have a video where I talk about those specific details of the advantages of using an HSA. And so I'll have a link to the playlist in my description and in the comment section below. That way you can watch those videos and learn more about HSAs if you're not too familiar with them. And so if you weren't using your HSA as an investment account, or if you weren't saving your receipts to reimburse yourself later, is this something that will cause you to make that change to actually investing your HSA funds and then reimbursing yourself later? What are the specific items that maybe you buy on a monthly basis that are over-the-counter medications that you think will add up to a huge amount once you're actually in retirement? So let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.